All right. The probably the biggest challenge that I think we, we see... could just like link questions yes. to questions because I was just gonna comment on the snowflake piece, but the only oh, thing no, I'll no, say go is... ahead and go ahead and comment on snowflake. We have a customer who's already sending all their SAP data into Snowflake. They're using high by, this is why we have the SQL query part mm -hmm. to pull the SAP data, the order information out of Snowflake to deliver it down to the UNS, to give it to the operators so that the operators who are making the parts know who the customer is that they're making it for. So they feel more connected and, you know, build higher quality product. And are more one of the, focused on it. One of the big ones that we're doing, a little inside, I haven't talked about this yet, but since you brought that up, I'll bring it up. <laughs> one of the big ones that we're using Snowflake for is what we used to do was we would use, Ignition's the most common IoT platform we use. I would say 80% yeah. of the time, Ignition is the IoT platform. Um, oftentimes what we're doing is we're using Ignition's SQL bridge to connect to IT and OT databases inside of the organization and then we're doing some type of data ops inside of Ignition. Maybe we're running a query into a UDT or whatever. And then we're and then we're using an MQTT transmitter, using that edge of network node, that Ignition edge of network node to send it to our broker. And then HiByte is the now we're using HiByte to handle the data operations from the broker. We're not doing that now. Now what we're doing is we are either going data database directly to HiByte. Or we are going database and then we're using the migration tools, the replication tools to replicate our database in Snowflake and we're going Snowflake, Snowflake to Highbyte. But yeah. that is a fundamental change since you guys added the Snowflake connectors in, uh, I, I, yeah, I always- this last release. 3.3, is, is that yep. the 3.3, right? Yep. Yep. Um, but that's the new, that's the change. Like what we're doing is taking all these- data sources inside the organization and we're either putting them in snowflake and then pulling them out with high bite or we're we're connecting them to high bite and and interacting with all the, right. the data sources that way so yeah yeah uh wait let me ask you this question so this is a obvious the in the the one of the that that life sciences customer you're talking about so i'm going to go speak to the fda in a couple of weeks so i'll I'm going to be speaking at IFPAC in Washington, D.C. on yep. March 4th, right? And that whole venture is being put on, you know, like the, the primary speakers there are all from this life sciences company. That journey, that original journey, I think is a really important one in life sciences. So this was when we figured out how to do digital transformation in life sciences. We had, we had, we had done it for one of the big life sciences companies and... We ended up with lots of internal holy wars. We we did our UNS implementation. Then we had to hit pause so that they could use MuleSoft. You know, some architect wanted to use MuleSoft from Salesforce. Then they had, to, and it took him a year to do that. And then they had to compare the two before they decided, okay, now we're going to use UNS or go the UNS route. What we did with this new life sciences company we've been working with for a few years is we decided to work on their, on their PMPD side. So where they developed the drugs and where they develop the manufacturing operations. So most people don't know that when you manufacture a drug, you're man generally you're manufacturing it in a bioreactor. Well, these drug companies, they have many bioreactors in these labs where they're literally building models of the manufacturing operation and then they're testing it. And so that when they put it in production, they, they're producing high quality drugs and they know that the process works. So we went this client called us and we went there to PMPD to do digital transformation so that they could just go, okay, now we're going to go over to the commercial side because we know right. it works. We can prove it. When that engagement first started, we pitched high bite. So we created an architecture. It was in January of whatever year, let's say 2021. I I'm assuming that's the year it was. It was January of 2021. And there was basically two people on board. There was the director who brought us in, and there was a young developer who was like 20 years old and he wasn't invested in anything they had there. Everyone else was skeptical. The whole IT infrastructure, the OSI Pi group, everybody was like, I, you know, I really question whether this is viable. I wouldn't say that there was anyone who was actively working against us. Everybody was operating in good faith and that right, was a positive. Right, right. So we pitch high bite. We have ignition. 
uh, High Byte, um, High MQ. Um, I, I think we actually proposed EMQX. Uh, we uh, Kepware for device connectivity on the edge. Um, and one of the first things they did was they said, why do we need High Byte? It was one of the first questions. They're like, and we're, we're making the data ops explanation, right? Why do we need High Byte? Well, we can get away with building UDTs and ignition right now because we're doing a proof of concept. Yep. But we cannot scale doing it that way. There's no way for us to scale doing it that we need. The data operations needs to be handled in models in a separate platform. Okay. That, you know, that's just the, in order for us to be able to scale. Well, they resisted. And so we had to do the initial proof of concept without using high bite. We had to, it took about five months. And once we delivered, once we delivered the, by the end of the fifth month, their entire team, I mean, 16, 17, 18 developers were all 100% true believers. Like UNS is the few, and literally they, they went and they presented to the entire company saying, we recommend this be our future. Okay. Did this whole, and that, and now they're going and presenting to the FDA, the exact same thing. And I'll be speaking at that, speaking at that conference on the fourth. It only took them about three additional months for them to say, oh, we need high bite <laughs> in order for us to. So it took them six months to realize the value of the architecture. It took them three more months before they realized, oh, wait, you're right. We must have a separate data ops platform like high bite to do this.